Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about some makeup I've been trying for a while. Some of these products have been really, really good. And some of the rest of them, I kind of feel like, you know, they're okay. And there's definitely a dud in the bunch. <laughs> All right, let me jump into it. I am going to start with things I picked up during the Sephora sale. Now, this is not everything I picked up during the Sephora sale because as things go, some things I'm reaching for more than others. Here's one that I really have been liking and is so beautiful. This is the Danessa Myrick Sammy Skin Serum Skin Tint. Okay, so this skin tint is so lovely. I like the fact that it is not too heavy, but it's also giving a little bit more coverage than um, some of the other skin tints that I have. All right, so this is what it looks like. This is shade number two. It's a really good match for me. It's just it's not a hair deeper than my natural skin tone, but I don't think it really matters because you can't really tell because it is light. And I really thin it out once I hit like the jaw and go down. Um, a lot of the coverage I need is kind of like center of the face, like redness I have around the nose and hyperpigmentation across the tops of my cheeks. But once I get to about here and down, I really don't notice it. This has been beautiful. It wears really well. It looks really pretty. This this is not nearly as skin-like as the other skin tint I've been trying. This is the one from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. This is beautiful. This is what I'm wearing today, but the it's kind of like, what are you looking for? This right here is $49. You're getting one ounce. You're getting one and a half ounce as well, 1.58 ounces here. And this is in the $30 range, I don't, 36. Anyway, it's beautiful. You're getting more. I feel like the coverage on this is a little bit more, but and I'm not saying it looks heavy and doesn't look skin-like, but I didn't know what skin-like could look like until I tried this. I always thought, like all of these foundations and other things I have in my collection, oh, this one looks like skin. This one, I can't tell that I'm wearing. Okay, so this brings skin-like to a completely different level. If I want to knock up the coverage on this, I need more than the two recommended drops. Like Lisa said that you could, you know, with two drops, you could do your whole face. Yeah. I used for today but I feel like overall it looks pretty good this has been beautiful but this is not giving the same level of coverage as this they both wear really well they both look beautiful on the skin this is a more affordable option you're getting just a touch more here but if you're if you've got gorgeous skin and you just a little a little evening out I really think you'd like this not from Sephora but I was like we're talking skin tints let's talk about it all right from there Oh man, things I got during the Sephora sale. Here's one I don't know about. I, I really wanted it, maybe it's the color that I got. This is the new powder blush, kind of like the glowy powder blush from Rare. I have the shade Sheer. Okay, so this is very similar. I am wearing a touch of this in through here. This is very similar in formula and in feel to the highlights. The one thing that I don't like about this is how fragile the highlights were initially that I'm worried if I look at this cross side, it's going to shatter because I have the pink and the pearl shade. I don't remember the actual names in the highlights and they've both been shattered and I've had to repress both of them. And I don't want to have to be that precious with the product. I do like the price point. I think this is pretty. I think if you like a glowy blush, they're more expensive, but they're not quite as delicate. I would recommend the RMS Redimension Hydro Blushes. I think those are giving what this gives. They've got a wide range of colors. The packaging is refillable. They are more expensive, but I really feel like, although this is lovely, it's the fragility of this that just really has me worried. Um, and this color, although it's pretty, either it needs to be a little bit lighter, like highlighter, or it needs to be a little bit deeper. Cause like when I really build it up, um, when I've used it as a blush, cause I really have been using it as a blush topper. When I really load it up, you can see it here. The fact that my 49 year old skin is not as <laughs> bouncy and full of all the collagen that my teenagers, like their skin, this will look beautiful on them. This does emphasize the texture in a way that the highlights don't because I don't use as much highlight. I'm using a very small amount. I'm buffing it into the skin. You can do the same with this, but but this shade in sheer I thought would be nice because it's such a fair shade. It's either not giving blush or it's only giving highlight. I feel like although this is not a hit for me, I don't know that it's like the worst thing ever, 
but I think it really depends on what type of blush products you like and what you're likely to continue to reach for. I don't know that this is so amazing that I have, and maybe if I had a different color, I would think differently about it. But this shade, although it is pretty, it's when I really build it up that it starts to look a little, oh, I don't know. All right, the other blush that I have been loving, this one from House Labs. Okay, I tried their um, highlight formula last year. Is it the worst? No. Did I send it back? No. Do I reach for it all the time? Also no. I've been reaching for this blush a lot. And that says a lot because before the sale started, I picked up the new Patrick Ta in um, Just Enough, which is like that cream and powder duo, which I really love. But this shade here is beautiful. This is the shade French Rosette. Okay, so it is... Um, it has a little bit of pink to it, but it's basically a really pretty peach blush and it's been a long time and, and they work really well together, which is why I'm wearing both of them today. You know, most of the color is coming from this. Some of the highlight is coming from this and from something else. But I feel like out of both of these blushes, I have been reaching for this one from House Labs more. And this right here is what makes me want to go and swatch more of this formula and see if I want more of these shades. I like the way that it lays on the skin. I like the way that it wears. I think it's a really pretty color and I think the formula wears really nicely. This has been kind of like a surprise. I wasn't expecting a lot, but she's lovely. The one that, I don't know, I, I, I'm wearing it today and I've been trying to continue to wear it. And can I get it to work? Yes. But does it do what it's supposed to do? I don't think so. And that is this. This is the Glow Beautifier from Natasha Denona. This is her new like high glam. Okay. The name legit is the High Gen Skincare Infused Glow Beautifier. Okay. I have the lightest shade. I have the shade one. Is it pretty? Yes. Is it highlighty? Yes. And I will link the video for you here as well as the description box down below where I'm trying this. And, and what happens there is the brand talks about how you can use this with a brush all over the face. Now, if you are maybe under the age of 35, it might look beautiful. If your skin is not as, and I know Danessa Myricks, I mean, she's, she's not a 20 something. She's, she's a grown woman and it looks beautiful on her skin, but maybe we don't have access, she and I, to the same skincare, to the same esthetician. I don't have an esthetician, the same dermatologist. I don't go to a dermatologist except for a yearly skin check to check for, you know, potential skin cancer. I am doing everything with what I can buy over the counter at my local stores. That, that's the skincare that I'm using right now. And maybe, maybe, her skin is in better condition for genetics and for all the extra things she can actually afford to do because when she puts it on, it looks fabulous on her bare skin. When I put it on, all it does is make my pores look larger, my wrinkles look deeper, um, call attention to especially the expression lines right here in my forehead. Now, if I put it down and then put like product over it, does it work? Y yeah, but I don't know. I wasn't sold on that being how this works best. This works best for me as a highlight. I love it as an inner corner highlight, but I don't think I need a pan this large for an inner corner highlight. And the fact that this is $48, $48, it's supposed to hydrate your skin. I don't, I don't really notice a difference, but I'm not using it all over because the one time I did use it all over, I look like the Tin Man. So this for me is like a what? And maybe this would be beautiful on my young teenagers whose skin is perfect, but on your 49 year old friend here, no. This, this is a no. There's a good chance this is going back. I happened to pick this up before the sale and I really like this. This is the new Cloud Paint Seamless Bronzer from Glossier. So this is the lightest shade in sale. I really like it. I am wearing this today. And my favorite part about this is that it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't ever get to be too much. I feel like this has a, you see how like it almost turns to nothing and like, wait, where is it? You certainly can build this. My favorite way to, to use this is not with fingers or a sponge, but with a synthetic brush, kind of like a dense one. Let me show you the one I use. I've been using this. This is a Sydney Grace F04, but any sort of kind of dense synthetic brush like this that you would use for buffing on foundation would work really well. So I put some on my palette. Um, I kind of spread it around with my finger because I don't want all of the product to end in one spot. 
and I bounce this kind of like around the edges and then you can see as I'm going here I'm kind of mixing it into the bristles and then when I do that I can just like seamlessly pound this on wherever I want and I don't have to worry about a giant glob hitting. I'm starting to do this sort of technique more with liquid and cream products. Um, maybe, you know, getting some in the bristles, bouncing it on the back of my hand before I start applying it. Because when I was actually dotting things like this straight on my face, it was too much pigment for my fair skin. I think this shade works really well for me because I have a neutral undertone. Now, if you have a cool undertone or a warm undertone, I know that not every light bronzer works. But if you're fair neutral, I think you would really like this. I feel like it's just enough. Um, and that it's it's one of those things where it's not over the top and it looks natural. That's the hard part about being fair is, unless it's summertime and I'm really going like bronze goddess, and even then, bronze with caution, I can look crazy if I get too much bronzer on. So I'm always looking for something that's subtle, that does bring color and warmth to the face without looking like, you know, I have like a whole giant stripe of product. This is actually really nice, it wears really well. And I think for me, it's the ease of blending that makes me reach for it. I happened to pick this up on a whim. Um, I was trying uh, the new CoverGirl, what is it there, Nano Brow Pencil. I tried the one from Benefit. They're precisely my brow definer. It's little teeny tiny pencils. And then I saw the name for this. This is the Revlon Colorstay Micro Brow Pencil. And I was like, okay, how micro? Okay, this is very similar in size to a Brow Wiz. This is some, maybe a hair smaller than a Brow Wiz or the e.l.f. Um, fine liner brow pencil. I, I feel like there's a lot of drugstore brands that do a good brow pencil. Is this a good brow pencil? Yeah. When it runs out, am I buying it again? No, but if you're looking for a brow pencil and, and this is something that your local drugstore like stocks, because they don't stock everything. Like I can't find certain things in my local drugstore either. If you're looking for one, I like this and I feel like it's a good shade for my brows. I wear the shade dark brown in this and I feel like it is a good match for my eyebrows and I like that it's not too warm. It is very cool, it's, <laughs> maybe it's a little much, but I feel like this has actually been good. Um, I'm not mad at it, don't wanna return it. Um, I have been liking the CoverGirl Nano Pencil better, it's the clean fresh one, the one in the pink packaging, better than this one from Revlon and better than the one from Benefit. And for there, it's just the price. You're getting twice as much product in the CoverGirl for half the price because <laughs> the Benefit one is $25 and you're getting hardly anything. It's a great pencil. If price is not an issue for you, yeah, recommend the Benefit. But if you're trying to not spend as much but still get a really elegant look, I do like the, the other one. This is no slouch, but she's not gonna be an instant repurchase. Something else I picked up at the drugstore, okay. Remember, when it comes to foundation, certain other products, we all have what we like. And I wanted to love this mascara. Is it a bad mascara? No, this is the new Panorama from L'Oreal. Um, the problem I have, I have short, straight, downward pointing lashes. So I have to give them a curl, and then I have to put on product, and then I kind of have to hold the wand there so that it dries going up. Or like today, I didn't take as much time and my lashes are kind of like, and I know that I could change that if I was using a waterproof formula, but I don't wanna use a waterproof formula. I always lose eyelashes because I'm not patient enough to get the waterproof formula off. This is a little bit more difficult to get off than I would like, but remember, I'm used to a tubing mascara. This is not as hard to get off as the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift. I feel like performance-wise, I like the look of the Telescopic Lift, but this is easier to remove. What I do like about this is that the, the brush on here, we've got those longer bristles at the bottom, the shorter ones at the top, and it really does give out like a fanned out look on the outside corners to give you more of that kind of snatched and flared look. The only problem is because it doesn't hold a curl and my eyelashes are like, ooh, you said you curl this, but not really. This doesn't really hold it for me. So if you have lashes that are long and luscious and curly on your own, you probably love this. And I feel like you know, balm cleanser, warm water, and maybe like a muslin face cloth gets this off just fine. I always double cleanse, but sometimes after, you know, balm cleanser, you know, emulsifying it, washing it off, foaming cleanser, washing it off, and using a muslin face cloth, I still do have small traces of mascara. So that's when, you know, a little micellar water on a Q-tip 
and then I, but I don't always want to have to work that hard. I want things to be easy to rinse off. So I'm willing to go more for a tubing formula. She's not bad, but I don't know that this is made for my lashes. They look okay. I'm not going to get rid of this. I'm not going to tell you that it's bad. I just feel like this is made for somebody with different types of lashes than I have. It lasts well, it doesn't flake, it doesn't smudge. Um, it's easy to clean up if you, like me, are forever, even though I've been wearing makeup for 35 years, getting product on your eyelids as you're putting on your mascara. I do that all the time. This is actually a really nice mascara. I just think it would look better on different lashes. All right, here is something else I picked up during the Sephora sale. I don't know that I should have, but I picked up one of these mini clutches from YSL. So this is the eyeshadow in um, 100. It's very much a neutral lover's palette. Um, it did come with like little brushes in here. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm not gonna use those. I would much rather use my fingers with this if I forgot to bring brushes and I'm traveling with it, than use the brushes that were in there because all that does is it just creates like the bristles are so stiff and if you use them in the pan, it creates fallout in the pan. And then, you know, you go through your product much faster. These are beautiful though. I think the thing that I like about this is that this shade here, I thought it was just kind of like a cool taupe. It is, but there's a little bit of satin to this. This is such a pretty, just a little bit, not too much color. And it's not shiny, but it doesn't look flat matte. That's what I like about it. I also really love kind of like this pearly topper here. These two shadows together, like for a two shadow look, are exquisite. If you want to use the brown as a liner, it looks great. If you want to use kind of this more champagne-y shade, also, you know, a really pretty shade. But these are definitely more subtle. These are the sort of eyeshadows that I remember going, you know, in my 20s, who would want to wear that? You're not getting any color. Now that I'm almost 50, I understand. I want it to look beautiful and blended on my eye. I want it not to be too much. Can you build this up? Certainly. I've been wearing these really lightly, but the pearl in here does not bring any texture to the lid. These wear beautifully all day. This formula is what I would expect from a $68 quad. Glad I got it during the Sephora sale at 20% off because $68 for a luxury eyeshadow, I've been wanting to try more luxury eyeshadows, but it's the prices that just make me kind of like, <gasps> really, really, are we sure? The beautiful though, I do not regret this, not even a little bit. And I think that if for whatever reason I were to finish this or lose this when I was traveling, this is one I would be willing to pay full price for. This is gorgeous. I haven't tried any other shades. I don't know if this is like the standout one and some of the other ones are kind of like, wah, wah. I don't know. I don't think so. I would hope not for that price. But the what's keeping me from trying like maybe a Dior Quint or um, the new Prada eyeshadows is that I, I just haven't fallen in love with the colors the same way I did with this because it has that you know neutral with a slightly cool lean. This has been stunning. Love, 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 love. Another one that I've been loving and I'm wearing today is this new one from Viseart. This is the Paris Reverie palette. This is their new Etendue palette and she's beautiful. I love it. I'm not kind of like a purpley eyeshadow person and not that these are really purple. These are more kind of like pale lavender, but I'm, I'm wearing these and I'm like, oh, who am I? And I think what it comes down to is when you are fair like me, I wear the lightest shade in the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin in the foundation from Lisa. I wear shade number two. Um, I have shade number two in the Janessa Myricks, but the shade number one was warm leaning, two was neutral. So it's not always like the lightest one, but it's usually one of the lightest or the lightest neutral ones. Um, so I, I definitely can tell when something is too much on me and I have to be very light handed with dark shadows. The reason this is working so well is that I feel like you're getting depth here, you're getting light here, but none of it's too dark, none of it's too light. And these shades in the middle are absolutely stunning. Love this shade, love this shade. This is what I have on my lid and I'm not wearing it like, cause if you really wanna build these up, I mean like you can get these to be like crazy metallic. I have been liking the slightly softer kind of blurry, kind of hazy violet look using, you know, these guys in through here. They're so, so pretty. I do have some of the peach on. I do have some of this on and this over the top of the liner that I'm wearing today. This palette is kind of like 
exactly what I was hoping it would be. And I was worried that those kind of purples in there were not gonna do it for me because some of the other purple eyeshadows I have from Viseart, although they're lovely, some of them are either too saturated or the wrong undertone, and they aren't as flattering as this. This I've been reaching for a lot. These have kind of been like my go-to, like easy out the door, and um, if I want something a little bit more colorful, that's not, you know, too much. But again, Viseart does the same thing that the YSL does. I don't feel like it adds additional texture to the lid. I feel like it wears really well all day. I like the color story. I like that it's lighter. I don't know how well this palette would work on deep skin tones. If you have a really rich skin tone, these are probably not your shades. But there are so many other palettes that I never buy from Viseart because they are so dark, they are so pigmented. They're definitely made for a different consumer. And I do appreciate when they come out with some of these lighter toned palettes because someone like me who too much contrast, I look like I'm trying too hard. And I really, really, really love the formula of Viseart. This is a great purchase. If you like these colors, formulation is fantastic. Definitely recommend. These are the new Lisa Eldridge Sculpt and Shape Lip Pencils. These come in three different kind of undertones. There's warm lip pencils, there's cool lip pencils, and I picked up the lightest two neutral lip pencils. I think there's three pencils in each kind of shade group, maybe four, I don't quite remember. Check the website if you're curious. But I have really been liking these. I like these best when I wear these with either a matte lipstick or a traditional bullet lipstick that's not too hydrating. Um, the reason I say that is as a 49 year old, okay, so the formula is so different than the other ones Lisa has. The Enhance and Define pencils set down. They are a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, a little bit more like a gel-like pencil. And so here is 0N and here is 1N. And these blend really beautifully. They're fantastic. The reason I don't wear these with gloss or with a really glossy lipstick is I was, I was hoping I threw on a, a YSL um, Love Shine today. And although I love these, I find that the really emollient hydrating formula that you can get in a gloss or a lip oil or in something like this, it actually kind of breaks down the lip liner. Um, just like anything, like if you're wearing an indelible lipstick and you eat, you know, a greasy spoonful of soup or a greasy hamburger, it's going to break your lipstick up. That's what happens. And the same thing is happening here. Now, when I'm wearing a matte lipstick or a kind of a cream bullet lipstick, it doesn't happen with these. It's only when it's really really hydrating because I have been wearing these with glosses and I do find that pretty soon the edge is not as sharp as it was. Do they kind of go everywhere? No. The difference between this and the other ones from Lisa Eldridge, here's one of the other ones. First of all, you can see that the cap is different. This is kind of like an airtight cap and this is just like a regular plastic cap. These are a wooden pencil and these aren't going to dry out as quickly as these guys are. And these are not in a, um, a, a wood packaging. This packaging here is, it kind of feels like plastic or some sort of a composite. You can sharpen it traditionally the way you would a traditional pencil, but once this sets, it doesn't budge. So if I wanted to feather it out, I'd want to do it now while it's still, but you can see how the edge is setting around there. Once this formula sets, the Enhance and Define, she doesn't go anywhere. So I'm glad I have like the bright red. I'm glad I have these kind of more bold mauve tones. Um, and I like this formula here because it's so easy, it's so comfortable, um, but it's not as long wearing as this, but they're so much easier on the lips. But I feel like if you ever pair them with something that's a little too glossy, they may not give you that super ultra crisp line that you're looking for. So we're at the point now where this will not smudge, but these guys, do you see? That's the difference between these guys. And these have been on for a minute. They're not a bad lip liner. It's just a completely different animal altogether. Let's talk about a few of the lipsticks I picked up. This has been a favorite of mine. This is the Satin Lipstick from Makeup by Mario. And this is the shade 917. This is the lipstick I have been loving to pair with these liners from Lisa Eldridge because I can get a perfect line. Having wiped everything else off before putting this lipstick on, I didn't want to put the liners on again, but I get a absolutely perfect line and, and everything stays really well. This formula is creamy. This formula is nourishing on the lips. It doesn't dry out. It lasts several hours. Is it gonna transfer to a cup if you're drinking a cup of coffee? Yeah. Is it going to wipe off if you're blotting your lips while you're eating you know, food and you have to take a napkin to your mouth? Yeah. 
but it's easy to reapply. It, it feels really good on the lips. This formula, I want more in this formula because it is delivering. First of all, the matte black packaging is nice. She's magnetic, $26, it feels weighty, it's lovely. Um, the formula, the bullet shape is your traditional bullet shape, but it's a beautiful lipstick. It's the perfect, not glossy, not matte, comfortable on the lips, easy to wear, easy to reapply. This is a sure hit for me. I have not always liked all of the lip products from Makeup by Mario, but this one, ah, this is amazeballs. I did pick up two of the new Love Shines from YSL. Love these, love these, love these. Uh, let me swatch this one here for you. Um, look how pretty this is, 917. It's really pigmented, but very lovely. So the YSL Love Shines, these are kind of like the reimagining of the Rouge Relipte Shine. I picked up two neutral shades. I am so glad I did that. These have turned into, um, this is the shade 202. This is the shade 201. These have basically been living in my pocket, in my purse. I take them with me everywhere. I was wearing one of these earlier, one of the Lisa Eldridge lip liners, and you could see as the video progressed that the, the line was kind of migrating a little bit. But let me take this off. I'm gonna throw one of these on so you can see it. So my favorite way to wear these and the candy glaze is just throw them on, just like this. One of my favorite things about this formula, and especially these two really fair shades, is that I don't need a mirror to put these on. These are, are like my bougie chapstick. <laughs> now, they do have some tint, they do have some color, they are very comfortable, they are scented, and they're $45. So I know they're expensive, like chapsticks. I know, and I know they're really more of a glossy lipstick, but, but this is easy, this is crazy easy. It looks so good, it makes my lips look hydrated, nourished, I can throw it on whenever I want. I don't have to go and find a mirror someplace or a reflective surface like the back of a spoon because I've done that before. But the truth is, I think these are great. I was looking, uh, YSL came out with a new Love Shine, long name, long name, Butter Balm. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm gonna try those. And guess what? I don't know, they're pH adjusting. Oh. And any time a pH adjusting product, it comes out, mm, it never works for me. I don't think it's going to. I may try one, but probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a little disappointed with the idea that those would have a pH adjuster in them because me and a pH adjuster, it just turns hot pink on me. And it, it's just not, it's not for me. But these, these are lovely. And if you really like the Rouge Relipte Shine, I don't know that there's a lot of difference here. What the difference I'm getting is really packaging. It's not gold anymore. Um, every single tube comes with this baby pink behind it. And instead of having like the circular YSL emblem on it, now it's, you know, sideways. So they've updated the packaging. They have updated the formula, but I don't know that the formula is drastically different enough because I've got like five or six of the Rouge Relipte Shines and I still love them and I still wear them but I don't know that these are different. I think they're just putting it out there, calling it a new name because, you know, sometimes if something's been out for a while, we forget how good it is because we're always chasing the new. So I kind of understand why YSL did that, but if you already have like your favorite shade of Rouge Volupte, that's kind of what this is, but I don't have shades like this right now. The shades that I have, I have reds and I have kind of peaches and berry shades, but these guys, mm, really been loving. Thank you so much for watching today. I really love being able to talk about the things that I've been loving, that have been working really well for me. The, mm -mm, no, this is not gonna work. And the, and the ones I'm still kind of undecided about, like this one here, interesting, but mm, is it exactly what I'm looking for? I don't know. I think that that sort of discussion about makeup really taking not just a first impression, but a deep dive into who it works for. Am I reaching for it? Is it worth your money? I think, especially now with everything going up in price, I think we definitely have to talk about those things. Here's where I wanna know, have you tried any of these? What have you been liking and using recently that is new to your collection? It doesn't have to be a new product, but that you've added to your collection recently that you like, or what are you curious about? Don't forget, I'm gonna link everything that I talked about and that I'm wearing on my face in the description bar down below. Those are affiliate links. If you choose to use them, you don't have to. It does help my channel, so I appreciate that. Have a fantastic day. I will see you again soon.